Alright, hello, 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 hello everyone, hi, welcome uh, to episode 6 of Some Random. Uh, today we're joined by a very special guest. Uh, our guest today is Jar Pogo. Uh, also goes by, uh, I don't know, a lot of things. Jar Pogo is super important because uh, that's his initials, uh, but we're just going to call him James today because that's easier than saying Jar Pogo a bunch of times. <laughs> uh, Very true. So, uh, hey man, hey, how's it going? How are you? It's going really well. I'm doing great. Um, I'm I'm excited to uh, get into this and just uh, get to know each other and talk. Yeah, man. Uh, I full disclosure um, for everyone listening and and for you yourself. Um, I didn't know who you are. No disrespect. Um, until Body yeah. Double recently was like, hey, you should get this guy on the show. Uh, and I was like, okay, yeah, like I'm open to having anybody. Like that sounds good. And then you responded with, by the way, I'm a world record pogo bouncer. And I was like, well, obviously, <laughs> obviously he's got to be on the fucking show. Uh, no questions about it. Um, uh, so yeah, man, holy shit. Uh, wow. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me the time of day. Uh, oh, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and there's no reason to know me because I just started uh, getting involved in uh, Smash competitively this past January. So I'm, I'm very new to the actual fighting game community. Hey, look, that's totally fine, man. I, look, you've been eight months in it uh, at this point then. Uh, you know the ins and outs and the goods and bads of, <laughs> of what comes with being in the yeah. FGC. So <laughs> no surprises there for you at this point, I think. Yep, um, yep. Uh, when I first got into it, my eyes were opened very quickly about oh, all, yeah. all the shit that goes on. <laughs> oh, man. Well, no, that's... uh, Yeah, like I said, I I, I didn't know you, but I, I'm very excited to get to know you. Uh, so, yeah, like, let's start. Uh, who who the hell are you? Who is Jar Pogo? <laughs> there's, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Uh, <laughs> so so the, the, the story behind the name... Jar Pogo is real simple. Jar is simply my initials, and Pogo is is what I've kind of become known for, uh, both breaking Pogo Stick World Records, um, and then as of late, trying to get into Smash more competitively, which is is fucking phenomenal. And and even more so recently now, in the past few weeks, after watching Evo and and seeing what's going on, connecting with Body Novel and and you guys, Golden Fate as well. I, I really want to start looking into other fighting games too, like Street Fighter and getting involved in, in the actual community itself outside of Smash. No, so, no. Yeah. a lot of random shit, um, <laughs> but yeah, Pogo's the big one. Yeah, Pogo is definitely the big one, man. Uh, and if anyone wants to look up, uh, do you mind if we disclose full names? Is that okay? I mean, we're going to be Oh, abs- yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm hard to hide. You can Google me and you'll find everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, just so everyone knows, anyone that's listening, all the information, I will try my best to put into links for the show notes. Uh, lately, I've been really bad about it and just, like, sticking it in a fucking reply tweet to the actual information <laughs> about the show. Uh, but I'll put it out there. Um, but if you guys want to look up, and I'm going to try my hardest to say this properly, uh, James uh, Romulit- Romulitis. Romeliotis. Romeliotis. Shit. All yeah. right. That's uh, all right. It's all right. Everyone <laughs> says it sounds like a disease sometimes, but it's not. It's just my name. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So, R- Romeliotis. Romeliotis? Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Fucking perfect. R O U M E L I O T I S. Uh, I learned want... how to spell it with uh, the Mickey Mouse theme song. With the Mickey so Mouse theme song? R O U M E L I O T I S. Oh, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful no i love that <laughs> uh, but if you guys want to look him up uh you can see uh this madman this absolute madman spent almost 21 hours on a pogo stick shattering the world record 206,864 bounces wow <laughs> holy yeah. shit well, i can barely tie my own shoelaces and <laughs> i have guests on here who are incredible like yourself uh, do you mind walking me through that? Like, what was that like? Yeah. So, so one disclosure about it is it does allow for a five minute break every couple hours and right. you can, you can earn a couple. Um, I think at the one I did in California, the rule was you could save up to 10 minutes and they do that to kind of allow for bathroom breaks and that sort. Um, there's a separate record for most consecutive. So that's pure nonstop. Yeah. Well, um, we'll, we'll get to that one in a second. Cause I want to talk about that one for sure. Oh, sure. So, so this one. <laughs> I mean, the big thing behind it is it's mental. It's very, very mental. 
Um, the activity itself, bouncing in place, is not that hard. Uh, but you have to convince yourself that, you know, this is what you're doing. This is what we're trying to do. There's going to be a purpose behind it. So a lot of the uh, reasons why I actually do these world record attempts is all for scleroderma and to raise money and awareness for uh, that autoimmune disease. Okay. Uh, see, this. I, I read uh, that the – what was it? Um, bounce for a cause? Or... Bounce to a cure, yeah. Bounce, bounce to a cure. Uh, can you walk me through what uh, scleroderma is? is? Did I say it right, scleroderma? Yes, uh, scleroderma. scleroderma. It's, uh, okay. it's an autoimmune disease. Um, it mostly affects women. It still does not – there's still uncertainty if it's genetic or what actually causes it. And there's um, – at this point, there's ways to sedate it and slow the process down. But again, like an autoimmune disease where it's the, the body's immune system attacking itself, uh, it's commonly known as a hardening of the skin. Um to the point where you could take a knife and stab yourself uh, if there's a hard patch of it and not even break the skin, oh. um, which sounds oh. like a superpower until you realize <laughs> the actual implications of it when you know your hands and joints, they start curling in, you can't use them, and if it actually affects any internal organs, that's a recipe for death. Yeah, oh wow, I had no idea. Uh, opening my eyes to all kinds of things tonight. That sounds completely terrible. Yeah, it, it, at first I was like, this doesn't sound so bad, you know? Fucking, I got like armor skin. Right, no. And, and <laughs> it, it, it's it sounds kind of neat, and uh, and I didn't know of it either. It's it's a very uh, it's not a, a popular or common disease that a lot of people talk about. And uh, I I came across it in my college career. One of my friends um, who I met there, his mother actually suffers from it, and he would always do an annual walk in Worcester. Um, to raise money and awareness, and that connected into the pogoing thing because I've always been pogoing. And senior year of college, we decided, fuck it, let's let's turn some heads. Let's try to break a world record for scleroderma. Worst case scenario, we still raise money and awareness uh, for scleroderma, but best case, I I break a world record. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, uh, well you well you fucking did it, man, and <laughs> it, it is. Uh, after watching, like I said, I uh, for the last hour hour and a half i've been all over these pogo videos and like learning a little bit here and there but oh yeah my god the the mental like the mental uh challenges that you have to go through to do that and like not counting like the physical dexterity you need to bounce for almost 21 hours is absolutely incredible <laughs> that, oh my god uh i watched um what was it uh pogo palooza i watched some videos on that uh, the oh main, yeah. The main popped up there. Uh, I saw dudes doing like backflips and like high bar jumps uh, with a pogo stick, which I didn't know was a thing. Uh, oh yeah, it's it's a it's a crazy world. Like Pogo Palooza is the the uh, world championship of pogo. Um, there's not a lot of pogoers, as you might expect, and the stuff that they're able to do because they're using we're talking about pogo sticks that are uh, air powered. So you pump it up with a bike bicycle pump up to like 100 PSI, 120, stuff will knock your teeth out if it hits you. Um, and they're shooting up like eight feet easily. And I think the world record for a high jump is like clearing an 11 foot bar and landing safely. So not like when people do um, the high jump and they hurdle their body onto a placemat or a safety mat. This is 11 feet clearance and then you have to land safely and show you have control. It's oh. fucking insane. Oh. Oh my god 11 feet in the air in a pogo stick 11 feet are you kidding me oh. and that so that's like the whole their body the pogo stick everything clearing so their head is like another four four feet in the air they're like 15 16 feet in the air oh, and god. i can't do that shit that is scary <laughs> as shit it is very scary it's making my stomach turn thinking about it because you're like oh fucking pogo stick well that's not too bad like I, i've been pretty high on a pogo stick 11 feet in the air is a one-story house Imagine yep. jumping from your lawn, like, onto the roof of your house on a fucking pogo stick and trying to clear a bar and land. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's craziness. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. That's incredible. Uh, so, okay. So, you not only, uh, for the people that are just joining us, I want to reiterate because we are a live podcast. People come in and out. Uh, 206,864 bounces. Uh, by Jar Pogo in 20 hours and 13 minutes, uh, which is the current world record, which is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> um, but that's not the only record he holds. Uh, you also had the previous record for 186,152 bounces uh, in 19 hours and 45 minutes, 
which is crazy to me that you hold both records. Like yeah, so so that previous one that was me re-breaking it, um, oh and then and then they ended up changing the rules because so that one the the marathon one had the five minute break, and then they realized they wanted to go back to consecutive and you know nonstop. Um, so I think that one's back down to ninety thousand, which I had it at like eighty eight thousand uh, over the course of eight and a half hours nonstop. Oh my god in heaven! Oh, that's <laughs> wild. Uh, <laughs> I, well, all right. So this is the one that really, really like it kills me, honestly, on the inside, because uh, like like James said, uh, they allow five minute breaks every hour, and you can stockpile some so you can take like a ten minute break, uh, which doesn't like seems like a long time until like imagine running your fucking ass off and you're like I have five minutes I have to run my ass off again for another fifty five minutes like oh god it, no I hate oh it. yeah my sides already <laughs> hurt uh, but oh like. Even as impressive, more impressive, I'm not sure. But this one is 7 hours and 7 hours, 12 minutes without a break. No 5-minute breaks, no 10-minute breaks for 70,271 jumps consecutively. How how did that one go? Because that's not like the other one, you know, you're like you're bouncing for a couple hours, 5-minute break. 7 hours, that's yep. an entire work shift. Like, oh yeah. What the hell? Yeah, that one <laughs> That one was fun. <laughs> that one was fun? <laughs> that one, uh, we did in New York, and it was awesome. Like, we were over by uh, 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 Washington, the Washington Square Park, and literally people would come during their lunch break uh, and see me going, and we I built a bounce counter, so I'm bouncing on this pad. It's showing the number of bounces. So people see, like, oh, here's the world record. Here's what count I'm at. And they're like, oh, you're going to be done around, like, 4 or 5 o'clock. Oh, my so God. They, they end up like coming back for that and it just had so much hype so many people around um i ended up falling off at the end which is why i didn't go any further with that one that look man i don't care you went seven <laughs> hours consecutively like i'll allow you to fall off oh my god well i read after uh the 20 hour session you talked about your ankles being swollen your calves being swollen your like yep. your arm was fucked up like how 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 normal are those injuries to come across? Like how often do you end up just like with those type of things? When I train properly, when I'm doing it for months on end and really getting my body in shape, uh, like the late, the last one I did, uh, a few years ago or so that one, I felt actually really good. Only the bottoms of my feet hurt. Wow. It was, it was pretty good. Jesus. Um, aside from that for, for the other ones, like if I'm, if I didn't train as much as I could have, or sometimes it's just, you know, maybe I slept wrong because it was in a different city, hotel boat, the hotel beds, uh, that can, that can lead to a lot of soreness and, you know, some lower back pain occasionally, but it's, um, oh, it's, it, if I train properly, it actually isn't bad. Okay. Well, what, what is a normal day of training like, uh, for, for one of these competitions? The, the biggest thing to do is actually pogo miles. So I'll, I'll go pogo around the neighborhood and do like three miles or so. Um, that kicks your ass. Yeah, I like, could believe po- it. If I saw some asshole pogoing around my block like 40 times, I'd be like, what the hell is going on? Did yeah. I enter a club oh, yeah. society? Uh, but then like if like now that I'm hearing about it and I go, nah, the dude's fucking working his ass off. Now I'm being a dickhead here on my couch, <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, well, all right. So that kind of leads me into your other previous world record. It like... I can't believe you're a what a four-time world record holder at this point. Yeah, I, I had, I think I had three all together, so I only have one currently, and I, I got to get those other two back. Like, oh, okay, I well, sat on my ass for a couple, uh, too many years so far. I got, I got to get them back. <laughs> I feel you. Well, look, man, you there's nothing to fucking shake a leg at because the the other one I want to talk about that you held for a full two years, which is still super impressive. Uh, you pogoed 23.2 miles, uh, for 14 and a half hours. Like, oh yeah. how, like, how, how, what the hell? <laughs> All right. That... <laughs> like, I, so, I... oh man. The consecutive one, one, uh, that was fun. Uh, the distance one sucked. <laughs> that one was painful. Um, <laughs> that's what I want to hear. Pogo sticks are not meant to go forward or backwards. They're meant to go up and down. So any horizontal distance 
is just pain. Oh my god. Yeah, I can only imagine. So like with that one, uh, you went for fourteen and a half hours. Is that another one that's consecutive, or do they give you the breaks like every couple hours for like a couple minutes? Thankfully, that one gives you the uh, the couple hours uh, or five minute breaks every couple hours, which is nice. Yeah. Um, the 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 problem with that one, we did that one in Costa Mesa, California, at a uh, the Orange County Fair, and they set up a two hundred and twenty foot track which is like okay this is cool until i realized it was a, a rectangular track with 90 degree turns oh, no. like, oh fuck <laughs> so i had to do like over 500 600 laps around this thing and i had to slow down at each corner to actually turn so i i couldn't even really build up much momentum and i think i ended up doing like nine miles in the first three hours i was on a good pace and everything but then the turns and everything started getting to me, and it dragged out to be 14, 14 or so hours for those 23 miles. That was uh, – like I had blisters on my hands. That was really, really painful because just my hands were rubbing against my legs and everything, and oh, yeah, that was painful. Yeah, that sounds awful. Who the fuck thought it was a good idea to put this on a 90 90- – Ah, that makes me crazy yeah. thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, it, it made sense in, in terms of like it was in the, in the center of the park. So people were walking around, great foot traffic, which that's what I need. Like in order to keep going, I start getting delirious. I need people around me. I need to be like talking to people, keeping my mind distracted and getting away from it. And yeah, that was – so it was cool having that, but it was a pain in the ass. Oh, I believe it. Well, yeah, the, the one video that I saw of you when you broke the, the 20-hour record was you at like – nine in the morning trying to sing to yourself to keep yourself from falling asleep and like falling oh, over yeah. like holy shit that is uh oh, I... yeah <laughs> it's fun like that that's the fun part you start losing it and you just start singing and like you know you you probably wish for that day like as you get older you start caring less about what other people think and you'll say what you want like pogo for a few hours you won't give a fuck what anyone thinks <laughs> Oh man, no, that's that's incredible. Uh, so this is the part. Uh, I, I know we're like twenty minutes into the show, but fuck it, whatever. This is you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, for anyone in the chat, if you have any questions uh, for Jar Pogo, uh, feel free to post them. We'll try to get them to them throughout the show. Uh, we are an interactive Twitch show. I don't know what the hell that means, but it's some good buzzwords that I throw out there. Um, so if you have any questions, throw them out to us. I'll read them on air. We'll we'll kind of go through them. Uh, Sales has a question in the chat. Have you considered picking up something less intensive, such as paddle ball? <laughs> ooh, ooh. Uh, maybe paddle ball with a pogo stick. Um, don't, don't, no, I, I, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> I, I haven't because, like, pogoing, it just, um, like, it, 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 it originated from my childhood. Like, I remember my brother and I going up to my grandfather's cottage, and there was, like, nothing to do, but he had, like, this broken-ass pogo stick. And so we would just sit in the driveway doing that bounce after bounce exchanging till we got decent and from the start of it so i always had that kind of connection with it it's uh it's just always been a piece of me that i i love it's 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 just fun i don't know i i do like the suggestion though so i, I might consider that with pogoing <laughs> yeah. uh, i mean you listen you bled without even knowing it you segued perfectly into golden fates question uh, which was, what would made you consider Pogo as opposed to other world records to break? And did you pick Pogo or was it a passion? Which, I yeah. mean, you fucking answered so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, a little bit more in the middle there is, um, you know, I did it when I was real young, like five, six years old, um, just learning it. And then put it down and I picked it back up in high school because all my, all my friends in high school, they were great at skateboarding, rollerblading, like hanging out and stuff like that. I couldn't do shit like that, but I could still Pogo. So I grabbed my stick... Uh, picked one up at Toys R Us, hang, hung out with them, trying new tricks, and then that's where it rejuvenated the the pogoing career. Uh, and then in college, it took a completely different direction after uh, an internship and joking around about wanting to be in the Guinness World Record book. And then everything led to uh, that moment with my buddy and his, his mother suffering from scleroderma. So it's like everything just aligned. And once I broke that first one, it started making me question, well, well, what what can't I break? And start trying to do the other pogo records. Wow, that is uh, that that takes a lot of determination, man. Because I, there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, I bet I could break a Guinness World Record. Yeah, but a beer sounds good. Uh, so... A beer does sound good, <laughs> but you can also do that while pogoing. Oh. So you could do both. I see. You say that, and I imagine the Will Ferrell gif where he's trying to drink wine. 
on his vibrating oh, massage God, yes. chair. Like, that would be me trying to get the fucking beer into my mouth as I'm on a pogo stick. Oh, just oh, terrible. Yeah. Just terrible. Uh, so, I have to know, like, you said you wanted to get your records back, uh, yep. which I, listen, at this point, I fully believe you can do because you're a, a man on a mission. Are there any other, like, pogo records that you're going after? I've seen that there's some that are most pogo uh, jumps in a minute, uh, least pogo jumps in one minute, which is a crazy one. I don't even know how, like, and I'm assuming that's constant airtime to avoid bouncing. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. So it's, you want to stay airborne as much as possible. So you're trying to get the biggest, highest jump possible, but doing that for 60 seconds, it really kicks your ass. Yeah, uh, I, Jesus, that, that's, uh... I, I'm, I'm imagining those guys that you said earlier that were doing 11 foot jumps and now oh, yeah. I'm like okay now on a microcosm of like two three foot jumps like trying to avoid the ground as much as possible oh, yep, like, yep. like the the world record is like 38 jumps so you're getting yeah. like a full second at like second and a half of airtime or no I'm sorry like less than a second of airtime but still like imagine jumping in the air and being in the air for a full second like Ugh. <laughs> right right and just and and you know they start out strong um like anyone else would but then it starts really beating on you when you're trying to keep like because it's all compressing the stick as much as you can in that air um and it after a while it starts even though it's only 60 seconds it takes a toll yeah uh, i i, I could absolutely imagine that is but a- i'm i'm a i'm a glutton for punishment i'm a sucker for the longer marathon ones um so I, I want to get the distance one back. I want to do um, I want to get the consecutive back. Other goals would be uh, trying to do the Boston Marathon, um, which would be a bitch. Yeah, uh, but yeah that it would, would. Be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> that that's kind of like my 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 aspiration is to do the like to pogo the Boston Marathon. That would be listen. If you pogo the Boston Marathon, I will watch every second of it. I will find Hell a way yeah. to fly to Boston. I will watch every second of that goddamn thing. I will follow you around the entire 16 hours or however long it takes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> because uh, Jack Sexty owns the the record now, uh, I believe. Uh, yeah, Jack Sexty of Great Britain. Well, yep. lis- listen here, Jack Sexty. I don't know who you are, but you ain't shit. And I'm, I'm fucking throwing down the belt right now. <laughs> fucking Jar Pogo is coming for your goddamn record. You better watch your neck, boy. Fucking... I... <laughs> I actually like Jack. Jack's a cool guy. He reached out before. Um, I think he's into uh, sports journalism. Um, I think that's what he went and got his degree in. And so he was he was getting into pogo and everything. So we were connecting. And so when we did the consecutive bounce one, when he broke that record, we had a bounce off in New York. And so there's three of us all going at the same time. And that's where I rebroke my record and got eighty eight thousand. But he broke it by two thousand more. Oh my God! Look, you say all these nice things that he's a great guy. Look, I'm. I'm throwing down the fucking gauntlet. Jack Sexty, I'm tired of your ass. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but I don't owe you shit, Jack Sexty, so I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I, I, love, I love the last name, though. Sexty? Oh, yeah. Pretty oh, awesome. Oh, my God. Jack Sexty, are you kidding me? That dude's a fucking Bond villain. That's a great last name. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Bond, Sexty's taking over the World Tower again. Oh, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? It's so good. Oh, uh, God, all right, well, let's transition a little bit. Um, as much as I do love the pogo, and I could fucking talk about these probably for another hour itself. Um, <laughs> so you said earlier that you've recently gotten into Smash. Uh, what brought you into Smash in the first place? Um, let's see. So, I mean, I started playing Smash right when it came out on the Nintendo 64. Um, and, you know, I saw that commercial of, of Pikachu, Yoshi, DK, and Mario and just beating the shit out of each other. I'm like, this looks this looks weird. Like, what the hell is this? Oh, yeah, it had, um, it had the uh, the turtles playing happy together. Uh, oh, yeah, the... it was it was so <laughs> messed up. Like, it's just like, what what kind of game is this? And I'm like, I need to buy this. Um, and all my friends, like, were super into it. And then once once Melee came out, um, started getting into college around then, and we just, everyone lost their mind. Like, we were all super into it. But I never got into it, like, super competitively. I didn't know there was a competitive scene. And then, right around Brawl, when that came out, uh, I they they hurt my girl Sheik, so I I didn't really play too much Brawl. I was I was really hurt over that. <laughs> and and then when the the new Smash for Smash Four came out, you know I, I played it for 3DS like absurdly uh, for that entire month before it came out for Wii U. 
Um, but I played it too much that I got tired of it when it came out for the Wii U. And for some reason, when Ultimate came out, you know, I was like, oh, this will, this will be fun. I'm excited for it. But it just felt a lot better. It reminded me back of the Melee days. Like a lot of my friends picked it up, um, even though we're much older than we were then. And they were all down for playing and like getting more into it. And then that's when I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I want to see what's out there. I want to try and get competitively into this to see how, how good am I. Uh, and spoiler alert, not good. Not good at all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's usually what happens. Like when people first enter the FTC is you go, well, I'm the best amongst my friends. Like I'll fucking show up to a local. I'll take oh, yeah. heads. And then uh, you show up and quickly realize that you ain't shit. <laughs> yep. like, I, mean, I, I, I had an idea and an inclination of that to begin with. And I remember my brother being like, no, you, you got to be good. You're like, you probably could take number one. I'm like, ah, I really doubt that. And then I went and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I was right. <laughs> Listen, if if you don't go 0-2 your first time at a local, then you're obviously just better than everyone from start to finish, right? Oh, Sorry. Yeah. But, oh, like, yeah. everyone's going to go 0-2 at your first local or your first event. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way it is. No, and it was – it in that – got me the taste it's been so fun since um and then after like i said after connecting with bodied um and learning a little bit more it's i, I want to start getting into like other other fighting games to get you know number one get better at footsies and trying to understand better because with smash it's too easy to rely on an aerial game and be handicapped by that compared to traditional fighting games um and just just overall like i i think the the fighting game community uh seems a bit more mature than smash and I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to learning a bit more about that, too. Well, listen, we'll, we'll happily accept you with open arms, no matter what game you go into. Uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, look, man, if, if, you're, if you're open to learning, I guarantee you there's a fucking mountain of information and people that will be willing to accept you in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I still still want to, like, really hone in on Smash, um, but at least pick up, like, something else to have, have some fun with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of great options out there. You know, Street Fighter's out there. That's been around for a long time. Uh, Street Fighter Five is in its fourth season right now. Mortal Kombat Eleven just came out. Uh, Soul Calibur is out there. Like I'm, now, I'm just mentioning games that I play, but uh, yeah, yeah. Th- there's a lot of fucking great games out there, and you can't go wrong uh, choosing any of them, um, unless you find some like older anime game, which if, you're gonna have a lot harder time finding like a scene for that. But if you're if you're into it, you're into it. So fucking go play. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, that's 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 excellent. Uh, well, like I said, we're happy to have you, and I'm, it's always good to fucking see the FTC grow. Uh, especially with someone like as a wild background as you have because <laughs> like there's so many of us that like we all enjoy fighting games but like that's pretty much it like that what what else do you do besides fighting games i don't know i fucking i drink pretty well but like when someone yep. has like an actual talent outside of the fgc you're like a fucking unicorn like whoa he does other <laughs> things like this is crazy that's fair that's fair <laughs> um so ah uh, fuck how, how do I how do I want to transition to this one? Uh, crudely, uh, okay. So you started playing Smash sixty four back in the day, like that got you into fighting games in the first place. But like, uh, there's no way that you started out with Smash. Like, what was your first video game that you played? Like, what got you into gaming in the first place? Oh God, this is gonna be dating me. Um, my, my dude, have you ever? It's okay. Have you I ever heard of <laughs> ColecoVision? Of course, I've heard of ColecoVision. I own Thank Coleco. God. <laughs> Thank God, because uh, my dad didn't want to get us an Atari, so we got the ColecoVision, the Atari ripoff. Oh, and, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was, uh, I think it was like Carnival and like Mousetrap, and there was some like just shitty games, but the controller was so fucking weird. Like, Atari is here with a joystick and one button, and ColecoVision is here with, let me give you this full number pad with these custom inserts, some side buttons, some start select, the whole, jo- uh, whole joystick. It's like... The- it, overwhelming yeah oh trust me that thing it my coleco is still sitting in my garage i'm not gonna lie to you that's uh, awesome I, gotta, uh, I, I hope i can find mine i don't know where the hell it is uh but hold on i'm gonna i'm gonna try to pull this up and show everyone because this thing looks like like if you saw a coleco you're like well that's obviously some kind of russian transmission device uh because th- that thing is fucking wild um god damn it uh of course no i can't find where all my shit is uh, but that it was so cool because it's like you've got you've got Donkey Kong on it and there were like I said Mousetrap I think it was that Sega made so you have all of the actual publishers today uh, like the key players they're the ones that made were just making games for this 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 
weird ass system. Yeah, the CBS ColecoVision. Who baby? Oh, yeah. she's beauty. Uh, she's yeah. a beauty. It, it's up on the screen now. It's a uh, hot damn. Look at that thing. Look at that thing right there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, no, look, look. It's totally all right to like admit that you're into old games and like you started with old shit because that's like I don't know. I'm approaching thirty very quickly. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but like I started out uh, on the NES and shit like that, and like I have friends who started like on Commodore sixty four, so like that's where I first yep, learned video yep. games and shit like that. So don't don't be afraid to spell your old man knowledge because it's safer. Oh no. Here. No, that's fair. It's uh, but but yeah, that one, that system. Oh man, that was yeah, that was the first one. And then you know, obviously NES, um, Genesis, SNES, some good times with Genesis. Oh, I think yeah. what was it? What was that fighting game? Um, the dinosaur. I think Rage, Primal Rage. Yeah, Primal Rage. Oh yeah, that one. That uh, one was the, that one was silly. The, the first time that I saw Chaos the Monkey do that like standing fart. And, yes. like, and that green cloud came across the screen. I lost my mind. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I actually had. Um, I I used to have action figures of Sauron and Riptor. Uh, Sauron the yellow T Rex, and then uh, Riptor uh, the Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where my parents got them. Uh, I think my dad got them for me. Um, but like, that's awesome. They showed up one day, and they're just like the fucking sickest action figures for Primal Rage. And I was like, this is awesome. I don't even have the game, but these are cool. Uh, and then the game came shortly after that, and I was like, well, obviously this is the greatest game of all time, um, and I can never fucking beat it as a kid, but now, like, in my older ages, I'm like, fuck yeah, Primal Rage, this game my shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, like, I didn't realize there were fatalities in that game until, like, much later in my life, like, fatality-esque moves where, like, chaos would piss on you, like, after a match and shit like that, like... Oh, it was, it was so obscene, it was, it was glorious. Yeah, like, that game, uh, man, that one... That one holds a special place in my heart for being like yeah, one of I the think, first fighting games that I actually put time into besides Street Fighter. I think I first saw it at an arcade, and then when I saw it come up for the Sega, my brother and I were like, "Oh yes, we gotta do that. We gotta get that." Yeah, that is. Uh... But we were garbage at it, like like any other kid. Like we just were like mashing buttons. <laughs> I mean, you don't really you don't really know what the hell you're doing, right? Like when you first pick up a fighting game, like you have no idea. Like there are special prompts and shit. You just see the computer do it and you go, well, how do they do that? And you press every button and nothing comes out and you go, oh, the computer must be the only person that can do it. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. And, it, I can't. and you can't, you can't just look up online like, oh, what are, what are all the buttons and everything? It didn't exist. Right. And then if like, if you picked up, if you happen to pick up the game from like a mom and pop rental store or something like that, and you didn't have friends that played the fighting game, like they didn't know how to fucking do it. Like, oh, we yeah. had no idea. The first time I learned how to do a Sonic Boom in Street Fighter was because we had rented it from this place called Movies and More, and on the inside of the case, someone had written down all, like, the, like, the commands for special moves. And no I, way, really? Yeah, oh, man. The, I have a whole story Oh, that guy's, a, that guy's a hero. Yeah, oh, that kid fucking saved my life, because I was like, whoa, what is this Hadouken thing? And, like, I didn't know what the fuck the arrows were, so, like, at first I just go on, like, left-right punch, and, like, no, no, Sonic Boom was coming out. Uh, and then I realized that it said, like, hold or something like that. So then a sonic boom came out, and then a Hadouken came out. And then I, yeah, like, yeah. landed my first ever, like, spinning power driver with Zangief. And I was like, well, this guy's the best. Uh, <laughs> but Movies and More was notorious for that because we you, you would rent a game. It would be $2.50, and you'd get the game for the full weekend. And every now and then you'd come across, like, uh, Mega Man X2 was the one I remember the most. And oh, nice. And someone would write the passwords for the levels and shit on the inside of the case. Like, it was, like, a mom and pop, like, that old brown case that, like, movies and fucking games came in. But it had, yep. like, a paper insert that said the name of the game. And they would write, like, passwords and codes. Like, here's how you get, like, to the last level with all the E-Tanks and shit like that. And, oh, my God. Fucking godsend. I miss those days. Oh, yeah. The no, I do, too. It was it was, it was was just a simple time. Like, ours, ours, our local one was called Club Video. Um, apparently, I lived in a town of assholes, though, because no one wrote down any codes in any of them. <laughs> Either that or the owners were dicks and would be like, fuck this, these kids aren't getting these. <laughs> well, they defiled our, our paper, so we have to print a new one, these asshole yeah. kids. Oh, my God. Yeah, those were the fucking days. And then you'd get a game that didn't have a password system and had, like, that shitty save system, like, on some games. Like, you'd get a Zelda game and you'd pop it in, you'd be, like, n middle of the game and no idea what the hell's going on. Yep. Oh, my God. That, yeah. Zelda 2, Zelda 2, that battery's died on me, like, I can't, oh. if I play that game today, I just gotta play it in one 
in one swoop and just beat it all the way. Otherwise, <laughs> start from start from the beginning. <laughs> the first time uh, I played a Pokemon game, we had actually rented it from Movies and More because they rented out Game Boy games. Ooh. And yeah, that was the heartbreaker for me because the weekend was over and I had to take the game back. And I was oh. like, oh no, well, I'll just get it next weekend. It'll be fine. And then you pick it up that week and your save file is gone and some other shitty kid has a Charmander now that you don't know the fucking anything about. Uh, Pokemon Yellow, you broke my heart. <laughs> what, what, was your st- what was your starter? I gotta know. Who did oh, you pick? Uh, uh, listen, all day, every day, it's Squirtle. Squirtle. Fuck, yes! <laughs> yes! My man! Yes! My man! Squirtle is the number one best Pokemon to start with of all fucking time, and I'll hear no Absolutely. other answers. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. fucking Lily. And if anyone says Charmander Charizard, well, you know what? Fucky fire type with this water type. <laughs> yeah. End story. Suck and no on one cares about Bulbasaur. Yeah, Sorry. suck on no this one. hydro pump. Charizard is a basic bitch, and I don't want to hear it from any of you. Fuck nope. all of you. You all gravitate towards that stupid-ass dinosaur. Suck on these water <laughs> cannons. I don't want to hear shit. <laughs> I Listen, I don't start a podcast to hear contradicting opinions, all right? You either agree with me or get the fuck out. That's just the way it is. <laughs> I, you know, I, I was expecting, I was expecting you to say Charizard or something, because like everyone says that, and I'm like, no, fucking Squirtle all day, uh, like the, every was, day. The first time that I realized that I could teach Ice Beam to Blastoise, and all of a sudden those fucking Grass types like didn't give me a problem anymore. Oh, a fucking oh, yeah. a blessing from the gods. <laughs> that yeah, fucking oh, Squirtle, Squirtle number one with a bullet, it, the best, <laughs> the fucking best. Oh, yeah. But those were the days, man. Those were the days when you fucking, uh, you would just go rent games and you'd have, like, someone else's save file or, like, you'd put your save yep. file on there and they'd be gone. <laughs> like, uh, oh, I, you, sp- you spend that whole weekend just playing it. You're like, I've only got this for, like, 72 hours. I need to beat it. Yeah, and then it then it's just gone. And then you're like, yeah. well, the, it, it'll be there next time, hopefully. Nah, it's never there. Nope, it's, it's gone. It's never there. Or if it is... By some miracle that your save file is there, some kid played it, used all your items, or got to the end of the game so you missed, like, half the fucking game. And so now you're just like, well, this is the end, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. Terrible, terrible times. Uh, Well, while we're boring these kids to sleep with our old man stories. um... (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) Uh, So, I know you said you've only been in the the Smash community and in the FGC uh, for about eight months now. Um, yep. Has there been an event that you've been able to go to, or do you have an event that you're looking forward to going to soon? So I, ha- I haven't been to any majors yet. I'd say, like, as far as a small major, I know SmashCon is, is this weekend. Um, I don't feel ready for a major yet, so I'm looking forward to probably next year or later in, like, the, the uh, wintertime uh, to jump onto something. Um, okay. But definitely going to Evo next year, without a doubt. After seeing all that shit and, like, some other friends who um, – who are more like just spectators and really enjoy the scene and watching, like they want to go too. I'm like, yes, let's just fucking go to Evo. Yeah, uh, Evo is fantastic for a spectator to go to. Like, if, if I gotta if, ask, I gotta ask you though, what would you recommend? Uh, if I'm gonna recommend an event, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's I I would say Combo Breaker, Combo okay. Breaker in Chicago, uh, well St. Charles, Illinois, um, is number one with a bullet, uh, the fucking event to go to. Uh, if you're looking to play games and like get games in all weekends, uh, Combo Breaker is the absolute one to go to. Like that, I, I know the Smash scene. Oh, I think it had close to a couple hundred, maybe 400 or 500 entrants at Combo wow, Breaker. Nice. I'll, ha- I'll have to check the numbers. Um, but the Smash rooms and the Smash events were going in full force, 24/7 all weekend. Like oh, from sick. Friday morning until Sunday night. Like they were fucking going. And when uh, when is Combo Breaker? Combo Breaker is usually Memorial Day weekend. Uh, awesome. I believe that's yeah every Memorial Day weekend. So they go from Friday uh, Friday morning is when they start, and then they end Sunday night, and then you have that Monday off to relax. Uh, nice. So I would, that's yeah. actually solid. That's yeah. a good idea. Uh, I mean, and for what it is, uh, St. Charles is fucking pretty cheap uh, as far as hotels and foods go. Um, Mm -hmm. there's a a copious amount of food, like, within walking distance. Uh, there's sushi, there's a place, um, oh my god, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, but they have awesome hot dogs and burgers. Uh, there's, like, a Walmart right across the street. Uh, so, Mm -hmm. like, anything you need is right there. 
Uh, liquor stores up and down the, the strip, just excellent. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I wrote that down. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that on the list. That's awesome. Yeah, Combo Breaker is the one to go to if you're looking to play games. Evo is the one you want to go to if you definitely want to see a lot of games. Like, if, yeah. As, as a spectator, if you're looking to get in a lot of shit, like Evo is the one to go to. If you're looking uh, for the Disneyland of video games uh, or fighting games, go to Combo Breaker. Uh, nice. I like the uh, the explanation. Yeah, uh, dude. I. I, I cannot say enough good things about Combo Breaker. Uh, as a major, I believe it is the number one one in America. Um, and nice. I, I, I'm not saying that I hope it supplants Evo, you know, because, like, Evo is something, like, it's a spectacle at this point. Um, yeah. But I, I definitely feel like Combo Breaker is the one that everyone should go to uh, if they've never been to an FGC event, event before. Like, that's the one that you have to go to. Very cool. Very uh, cool. Uh, yeah, no, I, every, ever since I've only been going to, like, locals, so there's one – right down the street in my uh, town that I live right now, uh, bus better up smash. And it's just chill. Like low key, usually 30 to 50 people. Um, super friendly and welcoming. It's, it's a great, it's like five minutes from where I live. So, Hey, look, man, that's, that's fine. Like going to locals is honestly the best thing you can do. Uh, yeah. Like, because that's like, that's the best way that you can grow. Um, I don't get the chance to go to many locals because unfortunately, uh, where I'm at in Northern Michigan, the closest local is almost two hours away. Oh, jeez, uh, yeah. And that's on like a Wednesday. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, so not not the best opportunities to go to. So like that's why I'm a frequent like online local guy uh, with Street Fighter. Um, but I do try to make monthly events and stuff like that. But like those like the local monthly events and like the local events that are held are definitely some of the better ones to go to for yourself to improve and uh, find out what's lacking in your game. Because if you oh, wait yeah. until a major to find out like what you're missing from your game, it's already too late. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. I'm not uh, not looking to that. Like I'm, I'm finding finding plenty, plenty of things to work on. Yeah, <laughs> Look, there's always room for improvement, baby. Always, always, always. The minute that you get uh, you get like placated with yourself and like you feel like, oh no, like this is good. Like I don't need to really practice anymore. You, you're fucking done. <laughs> you're fucking yep. done. Portillos, Porti- Portillos. But that's the fucking name of the place, the restaurant. I don't know why my brain just shot that out all of a sudden. Portillo's is the restaurant with excellent burgers and hot dogs. Uh, yeah. Uh, or, yeah, regionals are another great one to go to. Uh, we have one in Michigan called Michigan Masters. Um, if you're looking to be drunk and play video games for a full 72 hours, Michigan Masters is the one to go to. Uh, aside from being a super serious event, um, I believe this year was one of the biggest uh, undernight in birth. Uh, tournaments of the year uh, it was held at Michigan Masters. Uh, we had close to 200 people enter that one, um, and that nice. was like I believe before it got announced for Evo, or maybe just after it got announced for Evo. Uh, but Michigan oh, Masters cool. is uh, one of the one of the better anime tournaments that you can find out there, and uh, they have a good Smash scene. Uh, well, not this year, but last year there was a big Tekken and Street Fighter year. We had a good year for Street Fighter and Tekken this year, but last year was a super big one. Um, but yeah, if you can find a regional around you. Um, I believe Burkish Man uh, runs most of the events in your your area out uh, in Boston. Um, he should have a good idea. I'll, I'll try to link you up with him. And, oh, uh, definitely, yeah. Get some events. Because uh, that dude is super, super nice, and they run a bunch of great locals out there. But, yeah, fucking locals and regionals, some of the best places to train and get better. I can't recommend them enough. Yeah, I definitely am lucky to have one right down the street. And, uh, like I said, five minutes away, it's it's super easy to get to. Yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely, it, it, that's that's a fucking godsend, especially for like practice and shit like that. Like having it right up the road, pff, I would kill for that. Would absolutely yeah. kill for it. <laughs> um, so, has has there been a story or anything like that that's popped out to you uh, recently in the FTC? Like, has there been something that's come out of the short time that you've been watching and training? Like, what is the story for you from the FTC that you've really focused on lately, or what what's popped out at you the most? Uh, I think, um, <clears throat> well, let's go positive first. Okay. And it's more just the announcement of Banjo and Kazooie for Smash. Yeah, listen, um, that's a great fucking story in and of itself. I I just love the excitement. Like, everyone, like, I, I spent the following day after just watching videos of people, like, losing their fucking shit over it. <laughs> um, and me personally, like, that game, Banjo and Kazooie for the N64, is my favorite game of all time. Like, I remember getting a fucking VHS tape from Nintendo Power, like, the summer before, came, like, just before it came out, and I popped it, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this game is, 
I need this in my life. And when I got <laughs> it, I lost my shit over it. Like, the overworld is... I'm a sucker for platformer adventures, like 3D platformers, that have a really harmonious um, landscape for an overworld that connects all the levels. And Banjo and Kazooie at that time had the best one that ever came out. Like Mario 64, yeah, you had the castle, you're jumping through pictures. Banjo and Kazooie just had this a very elaborate overworld, so I fucking loved it. So when they announced that, I lost my shit. People lost their shit. I was so excited over that. <laughs> I, look, I'm totally with you. I I am firmly in the camp that Rare makes better platformers than any other company out there. Uh, oh, yeah. I will put Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 against any Super Nintendo platformer, including Super Mario World, and say that they are definitively better. Uh, I will put yep. Donkey Kong Country 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, and Conker's Bad Fur Day against any other games on the, on the Nintendo 64 and say they're definitively better. Fucking, they were just masters of the craft. Yeah, Rare knows what the fuck they're doing, and those dudes are excellent. Um, and I, I fucking wish the best for those guys going forward. I know Grant Kirkhope, uh, he just did, had a project with Ukulele that was fucking super awesome. I love that game. Yep. Uh, he's yep. a wonderful music composer. I fucking wish that dude the best. Grant is a wonderful guy. Uh, the music that he's done it, like, is a fucking earwig for all of us that played those games growing up. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, oh, I, I lost my fucking mind with that. Like, that, that was... Uh most recent happiest thing like so excited and, and again the the biggest appreciation was really seeing everyone collectively losing their minds like yeah there was just pure excitement yeah like when the fake out trailer happened like seeing like live reaction like in tweet like twitch chats and shit like that where like fucking duck hunt popped up and the split second like duck hunt pops up and everyone's like oh and yep. then banjo yep. fucking lands on his head Oh my god, the explosion of excitement is like, you cannot fucking, like, you can't. No, no, I was Ugh. smiling, like, that whole day, and my wife's like, why are you so happy? And I'm like, I'm gonna explain this, but you're not gonna, you're not <laughs> gonna even understand, and you're gonna just think I'm fucking weird. Both <laughs> happened, and she, she was like, okay, alright, that's, that's a little weird. <laughs> Golden Fate says he jumped up and cheered when it happened, like, yeah, Oh my god, absolutely. I, I saw the Jiggy go by, and I'm like, no fucking way. And then they did the duck hunt thing, and I'm like, all right, it's the gag, but they're definitely – I'm like – and I started questioning. I'm like, did I see a Jiggy, or was I hallucinating? What happened? And then he drops, and it's like, oh, fuck yes. Yeah. Well, that was the thing is they did it the, du the double fake out because they are, had already shown a trailer for Hero earlier in that – the Nintendo Direct. Yep. So I was like, oh, this must be like a stage or something. Like, no fucking way. And then sure as shit, it happened. And yeah, it's I just uh, couldn't couldn't believe it. Yeah, but uh, and co going along with that too, there was a uh, there was a guy, um, Locus, I think. He made a bet. He's like, "There's no way Banjo's coming. Like, there's no way I will if if he shows up, I will give free coaching to everyone that like comments on this." And that was like something he did like uh, days before the actual direct came out, and it had like thousands and thousands upon a com of comments. And when it came out, he was just like, well, shit. And the best part about it <laughs> is he's actually he, – he didn't just back away and say, fuck this, I'm not going to do it. He actually worked towards a solution like hosting, um, st streaming every night and trying to get people – he'll coach someone, but then every can, everyone can watch and it kind of helps. And he's just kind of doing a community-driven coach session, which I thought was – was super cool that number one he didn't back down from what he said number two he's he's trying his best to to fulfill what he what he promised um and and because of it too he's, he's making a name for himself so I, I gotta give him props for that too like very well done for him yeah, yeah definitely to, to to actually like own up to your word and do that kind of shit is incredible like yeah fucking props to that dude uh, Hunter in the chat, uh, HDM Executioner says, what got me was King K. Rule, DK, and Diddy losing their shit when they showed Banjo. That, like, oh, yes. Those dudes, like, all stuck in the window together and, like, losing their fucking minds. The gift that's come out of that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, one of the fucking best things ever. I will send that shit to my wife, like, spontaneously, and she's like, stop <laughs> sending me this shit. Because, like, that's my excited, happy gift. Ah, she's fucking tired of it by now. But <laughs> oh, I bet. No, that, that, that is a great, like, when they made that into a gift. Yeah, Beautiful. fucking poetry. poetry. Bless you guys. You fucking you you absolute heroes <laughs> for fucking Absolutely. saving us for that. Oh man. Oh jeez, yeah. So 
Yeah, like we can stick to the positive side of it. You don't have to give a negative story if you don't want to. If you do want to talk about it, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I know you said you wanted it. Like you, you said, I have a positive story, so I'm assuming you wanted to go with that. Um, if you have something else you want to talk about, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to force you on anything. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll open up a little bit about it because I think it's important. Um, and it's it's a lot of that ally and Captain Zach stuff. Um, okay. Not not just what's happened. Um, but also just reactions and everything. And it's, it's a type of thing where people like, I, it's, it's hard to remember this, but you know, everyone in the smash community, there, there's a lot of kids in general and it's, it's a, it's a shame to see people get so caught up in this. Um, I think like for what happened both of them should just be removed. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a voice in the, in the community. I don't know much of it before, but, um, the, the game rigging and obviously the underage stuff is horrible. Yeah, no, Um, it's absolutely terrible. I, I only know a base level of it, so I can't give too much insight, insight to it. Um, so from what I understand was, uh, uh, Zach was the one that was playing ally was his girlfriend, correct? Or is this the other way around? Do I have it? Uh, wrong? boyfriend. But yeah, boyfriend. They, yeah, they, okay. they were they were yeah. dating. Okay, they were dating. Okay, like I said, this is I only know a base level and I only know names. Yeah, and I don't know like the people themselves. And, so and, I can't and I'll even much. admit, like I don't think anyone really knows the full story except yeah. for the two of them. So I don't really want to go too much into the into the weeds. But what I do want to get out of this is there needs to be more positivity because not only when there's a negative um, situation around that. When there's negativity in general, people really flock towards Twitter and start harassing people. And and I see it a lot in Smash. I don't know how the rest of the other fighting game communities are, um, but it's one of those things where I'm like, fuck this. I really want to bring more positivity. And Golden Fate had some great tweets on it. Um, I think he tweeted out or retweeted something of... You know, I, I may be quiet or might not harp on something, but that's because he's trying to build more positivity and bring that out to the community. And, like, that's the type of shit that I love. I want to do that same thing more for the Smash community as well. Um, because at the end of the day, yes, I'm older, and I want to help people understand that, you know, there's more to life when it comes to, you know, having having trouble at home or, or anything and just trying to make – make people understand that you're going to get what you put in. And if you're going to put in negativity, you're going to get a lot of negativity out. Right. So I, I, I resonated a lot with what, what he was saying. And so while that was a, a bad situation story, um, I bring it up because it's important to realize it and also try to make sure to bring some positive community um, in, in any way, shape or form. Right. Um, yeah, and that's good. It, it, it's, it's fucking good, and we need it, honestly. Um, to give full context, uh, like I said, I, I didn't know much of it, and I'm, uh, I apologize for saying girlfriend, but like I said, I didn't know. I only knew names. I didn't know faces or anything like that. I've only, like, seen some shit, but a lot of that stuff where I see it and I go, this again, and I kind of fucking breeze past it, uh, which is bad yeah. on my end, but, like, we know how this shit goes, and it, I hate, I hate wrapping myself up in it and digging into it until we have, like, definitive here's what happened. Uh, but for anyone that for anyone that's curious, uh, if you do want the full context of it, um, so Ally um, was a Smash competitor, and he lied about having a relationship with fellow pro player Zach uh, Captain Zach Lauf, uh, who was underage at the time, um, and there have been allegations, and I have to say this is all alleged. I can't say with definitive proof anything. Right. Right. Um, but allegedly, uh, Zach and Ally had a sexual relationship. Um, they were, uh, Zach was underage, as far as I can understand. Um, so, and that that's bad enough already. Like, don't be dating underage kids. Uh, but on top of that, um, they were rigging games. Zach, I believe, was it Zach that was telling Ally uh, to throw games? Yeah, he, he came out and actually admitted to being upset that ally was continuing to do well um after all that's happened he was he was still upset seeing ally succeed and would tell him to just say like hey throw this game like don't 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 actually win this one and there were there were two specifically that he he threw and even the commentators at the time were like why why is he doing this move like why is it why he should be doing this um 
And so, so seeing that part, just it's, and yeah, you know, I'm sure he's gone through a lot of shit with, um, his, both mentally and what whatever happened. And I don't think again anyone will know the full story. Um, it's just pretty pretty bad overall. Yeah. Uh, so that is like a lot delving super deep into it because, like I said, neither one of us are experts. I didn't even know the fucking yep. people involved until two seconds ago. Uh, so don't listen to my shitty word for it. Um, but that is the general context of the situation. And it's, uh, like James said, it's, it's a fucking shitty situation. Uh, but realistically they both should be removed from the scene and, uh, move forward from there. And it sucks to have to draw a hard line like that, but eventually we have to in the community. Um, you have to sever ties and move on. Uh, because there's, yeah. there's and no room spit it back positively. We, we gotta have more positive people in communities in general, because there's always going to be, um, that that negativity that that comes up and creeps its way in uh and we need we need more positive people more more better role models to kind of help guide people and and do the right thing right uh uh yeah i mean that like that shit happens and uh yeah we do need we, we need to cut ties with it we need to move forward and there's a lot of people that have this weird hero worship idea in the fgc where someone prominent or someone that they like because that person plays well uh, they're willing to forgive a lot of things, uh, but eventually, you know, you have to stop doing that. Um, yeah. At HDM Executioner in the chat, uh, super solid dude. I love that guy. He's a fucking wonderful dude. Uh, he runs an event called ComboCon here in Michigan, um, which that's another like great, like, all the proceeds go to charity, uh, to the VFW and shit like that. Um, and he had to ban a person this year at ComboCon because shit happens, man. And like you have to draw a hard line, and I fucking appreciate the like the hard choices he had to make, but you have to make hard choices, and you have to ban people that don't belong in the scene. And Absolutely. Major props to him for like having the guts to do it, and it, it does. It takes a lot of bravery to do it because the yeah, it's tough. I, mean, you I, get is, I can't sucks. imagine the outlash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the backlash that you get from making a decision like that, um, it's uh, it it's, it sucks. We saw it this year with the Michigan Masters. Uh, that's another fucking situation I, I don't want to go into without speaking on the wrong thing. Uh, but some people were banned, and shit spiraled out of control fast. But, like, you got to make a hard line, I guess. Uh, we'll see how that resolves going forward this year. Um, maybe people can work some stuff out. Uh, but that's, I don't know, making those judgment calls sucks. And uh, my heart mm -hmm. goes out to those dudes that have to fucking do it. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's that. that. That is what it is. Uh, but we will try to bring this to a more positive light and uh, it sucks to like you know I, I'm sure it sucks to hear me say that as if uh, as if I'm like like just bouncing around these things but you know let's be adults here like you can't judge on this shit forever you know um, so fucking James like tell me like what is what what is your end goal uh, that from the FGC like, what is it that you want to get out of the FGC uh, what is it you want to get out of the Smash community like is it just continuing to improve to see how far you can go? Is this, uh, like, are you, like, hoping to, like, win a local or win a regional? Like, what's what's the end goal uh, for the Pogo champ? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I definitely want to be able to win a local, but really, you know, I it's it, it stems back to what did I try to do with Pogoing, right? I'm trying to help others, um, both through raising money and awareness for Spleroderma, but also showing people that, hey, if you put your mind to something, you can you can really do what you want. Like, pogoing that long might seem extremely taxing on the body, but it's very mentally challenging. And I'm just some kid uh, that happened to pick up a pogo stick. So with that, I want to do the same thing in Smash, and I want to, like, make people realize, you know, life, life can be tough. Um, and I may not know everything. I may, and I definitely don't know everything. But I may not even know what circumstances that someone may be going through. Um, but if they can enjoy the local that they're going to, and you know, distract themselves for an hour or two in the, in that moment, have fun playing some games. Uh, good. And I want to be that positive influence to encourage people to find their escape, um, not to just pack it down deep inside and ignore what's happening, but to be able to, you know, look towards some positive things in life and things that let them, you know, want to continue, uh, moving forward. Hey, I, well, look, you can't fucking get better than that. Like 
That's the, that's the perfect answer is to be a guiding force for people in the future uh, because it's good to have those kind of people around. Uh, yeah. So fucking much appreciated, man. Like I, I, I appreciate the effort and the thought that you put into it because a lot of people are like, I don't know, like I want to win something. Uh, but to actually like commit to being like, nah, man, I want to fucking show like you can do this if you fucking try. Like put in the goddamn time and uh, you can make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, se- separate note, um, this is what I'm going to throw out for anyone that's watching, anyone in the chat. If you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them towards us. Um, probably be wrapping it up here in a little bit, like maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure to throw them up in the chat. We'll read them on air. And, uh, me and uh, Jar Pogo will try to answer some. Uh, HDM Executioner asks, after Smash Ultimate, where does Smash go from here? Uh, oh. That's a tough one, man. Uh, you know, w- 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 when you kick off a game with everyone is here, uh, and a, a fan base that Smash has, that's like a, a, a very passionate and ravenous fan base, you know? Yep. Uh, it's hard to to reboot, you know? Like, Street Fighter Four ended up with 50-some-odd characters, and five comes out and five launches with 16 characters you know and uh that was met with immediate backlash and fucking uh the small roster size and like not enough single player content and shit like that so does smash go smaller like do they downsize the roster do they reboot completely or do they just try to keep ultimate as long like alive as long as possible like it's a fucking hard question um even even if they keep ultimate as long as they can there is going to be a time where it's no longer viable. Right. So even if that's five years or 10 years, um, and then at that point, I, I don't think they can bring back everyone again. I think they're going to have to, uh, upset people. Um, and they're going to, I, I would hope that they'd use the data to back it up from online or tournaments and stuff and, and, you know, cut out the characters that might not be used to get, you know, have minimal backlash. But People are going to be hurt by it, um, like, like you said, especially, especially in the Smash community, where where they're they're very visceral and they they have a lot of passion and emotion. But they're gonna they're they're gonna be people upset. I I don't see them doing it again with everyone is here. Like that's just that's I I love it and everything. But also going back to a smaller roster. I mean, what there's like seventy five, seventy six characters right now. Right. That's. That's a, and they've done a great job making them fairly viable against each other, right? There's there's not there's some trash characters in, like there is in everything, but not like the other games where there were heavy tier lists and and so I just don't see them bringing everyone back. I mean, I I, I think it might be more viable to have a smaller roster of like thirty characters and they really hone in on making it very very balanced. Right. I- I think that's something that's, like, impressive in what they've done already. Because if you look at the ultimate roster and you, like, put your hand up, like, over one eye and you eliminate, like, half the roster, you go, well, that's still a pretty good roster. And then, like, you pick up the other hand and you eliminate, like, the other half of the roster and you're looking at, like, the mid-screen of, like, 24 to 28 characters. And you go, that's still a fucking pretty good roster for, like, a fighting game. Like, you can't go wrong. Like, the the characters that they put in and, like, the abilities and, like, the way that they made almost each character feel unique. Like, even some of the Echo Fighters, like still feel unique up like separated from like their echo counterparts um, right right yeah so there's there's a few echoes that are just skins which yeah. like uh like Olimar and alf is alf is just a skin of Olimar. right they should have done the same thing with some of them because it's literally the exact same move set right um but from like dark but... samus to samus feels like a completely different character mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. And, and as far as i understand she is so i'm, I'm gonna fucking keep saying it, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I don't know. I, maybe in the future they go smaller roster and they completely retool the system, like make it like fucking PlayStation All Stars, and you have to land a super, like in order to get a KO. Like yeah, who I, knows? I I I I don't know where they would go with it. Um, other than I, I I do know that I I feel that they will ride Ultimate out as long as they can, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Right. Um, but where do they go from there? Because there has to be something after. It's maybe it just stops. But Nintendo's not known for killing franchises. Yeah, for sure. They they forget about them, but uh, but you know, yeah. They, they, but they definitely don't kill them off. Um, R.I.P. Mother Three ever coming to the United States. Uh, but yeah, I, but I don't know. But maybe you're right though. Uh, maybe they do. Like maybe Ultimate is the last one. Like maybe when they say Ultimate, they're like, no, this is it, dudes. Like. 
this is the end of the road for Smash. Who knows? Like, the game is, what, barely a year old at this point. Like, it's hard to speculate, you know? Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'll be very, very curious to see uh, where they go uh, five, six years down the road. Um, yeah, I mean, I I can't I can't see them this being the last one just based on, you know, unless Nintendo ends itself as well. Right. Like, I just don't see them destroying this franchise when they're – next gen or the generation after that comes out um but i could i could see i really could see this ultimate sticking out for as long as the switch does and who knows what they're trying to do with the switch too if they're just trying to make it be an upgrade that's backwards compatible fully and still supporting i don't know there's there's a lot of options here yeah that's the other thing too is like where the fuck do they go from the switch because you can't go for like from the switch being the ultimate portable console to like being like back to a tethered home console at this point. Like, you can't do it. I mean, I guess no, you yeah. can, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, and you look back and you and you see the progress, right? When they went to the uh, Wii U, you could see, oh, okay, that's them saying to detach from the TV. You have to be within range of the console, but you've got your screen right there. Right. Um, and uh, with them now coming out with that handheld Switch, they're – they're putting the nail in the coffin on the 3DS. So they really are showing that they finally got a platform that they don't need two separate groups. They don't need a handheld or a uh, console division. They've got one unified company. Right. And I, I, I think the short-term future for Nintendo is illuminated and we can see it, you know, fucking money rolling in and, like, the, the, the amount of games and everything that's coming out like we fucking know but the long-term future of nintendo i think is very cloudy and i i'll be very curious to see where they go from here absolutely oh my gosh um yeah so hdm executioner says in 2025 nintendo releases for 100 dollars a new console that only has smash with hdmi and land tethering support and gamecube controller plugins the smash cube is born <laughs> yeah yeah fucking give me the smash cube uh, I, I I think I, that's probably my my favorite part about Smash is that they they keep bringing back the GameCube controllers. Uh, the GameCube like, controller is fucking top three controllers all time. That thing feels so good. I like I could not imagine the backlash if they don't allow support of an adapter for any future system. Like oh my god. Oh yeah, that that that's gonna be the crazy part if they're like, well listen, it's time to get with the times, fuckos. Like no more GameCube controllers. <laughs> Uh, and Smash is motion activated only. Oh, I'll vomit. Oh, oh boy. I'll actually vomit. I don't know if I can hit. But look, who knows? That might be the future of Nintendo is that they go full VR and they're like, well, now Smash is all motion activated. All motion controls all the time. Oh, God. Never mind. I just made myself want to throw up. So I'm gonna... Ch- change is inevitable. Yeah, change is inevitable. <laughs> oh, God. It's like Thanos. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the bring bring back the power glove. The power glove is we're back oh to the future God. with it. Yes. Oh man. Although you had to set up that friggin' those that like ninety degree bar all around the TV. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. What a fucking mess that thing was. <laughs> what a fucking joke. Do you remember the the Sega Genesis had a fucking had a power glove like that? I don't remember that. No. Oh my gosh! All right, hold on. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, the Sega Genesis had like had a, had a, a similar like glove controller. Um, let me see if I can find it. It was very. God, am I am I a crazy person? Am I like did I just Mandela affect myself in convincing myself that the fucking the Genesis had one? I'm like ninety percent certain the Sega had its own counterpart to the Power Glove. And now I'm going to lose my mind if I can't find the goddamn thing. Well, apparently I made it up. Uh, but I swear to God it existed. Forget everything. Listen, my credibility is out the window. No, I still I, believe. Yeah, look, I still I still believe. Unfortunately, oh, God, I don't think it's around. I Maybe I saw it in a fucking TV commercial somewhere. Who knows? But that's Could have been a prototype. Uh, it might have been a prototype. That's the only thing I ever remember is like, I remember hearing about it and seeing like a picture of it long ago, and now I'm like convinced that it's real. And oh, hold on, let, let me. Sega Genesis weird controller. Jesus Christ, there's so many of them. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I take it back. 
Y'all don't need to hear me Google on a fucking podcast. Just believe me when I say some weird shit went down in the 90s. <laughs> like that's oh, not... very believable. <laughs> All right, man. Well, before we get out of here, um, I have to know, what is one thing that's been on your mind lately that you feel like you want to get out to the community you want to talk about? Uh, whether it's about uh, sc- the scleroderma. Am I finally yep. saying it right? Yes, I fucking yep. said it right. Whether it's about scleroderma, whether it's about pogoing, whether it's about smash, uh, the FTC, uh, the best tacos on the East Coast, whatever it is, let the world hear about it. Ooh. Jeez, uh, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's just, you know, I think people can get caught up in, in this isn't going to, this is going to sound weird for, for younger guys, but as you get older, people start getting, uh, finding their identity and defining it by their, their work. And by work, I mean their professional career. And all I can say to that is make sure you stay active with your hobbies. Um, make sure you stay in touch with your family and friends. Um, be a part of your community. Uh, don't, don't live to just do your your professional job or if your professional job has to be something that you're extremely passionate about that resonates with your family friends and hobbies fantastic but you know we're all unique individuals by what we do not just you know if you're a programmer or or working at a pharmacy or anything i mean there's a lot more to life than just just work and getting a paycheck so keep that in mind um, I know that doesn't really speak to a lot of the younger guys, but just remember that there's a lot more to you than than just uh, your ID at a at a at a job, and pursue those hobbies. Fucking that the most honest thing that anyone's ever said on the goddamn show. <laughs> that is 100 <laughs> percent. Like, please, please, please understand. Like, there's a whole fucking world outside of working and then eventually dying. Like, exactly. Keep your fucking dreams afloat. Um, all right. Well, with that, uh, this has been world record holder. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back. I'm gonna try to get it. Is it James Romul Romul? Oh, fuck! I messed it up already. James Rumula Rumula. Oh, fuck. Dark Pogo, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want to fix it. I didn't want to correct it. That's beautiful. Uh, Thank you. Oh my God, James Rumula Ru- Rumula Rumaliotis. Romeliotis. Yes, Romeliotis. Jesus Christ. The the Spartan himself. <laughs> Jar Pogo. Uh, you can find him online at Jar Pogo on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, RedTube, Twitch, at Sriracha Flash. And uh, this has been some random episode six, closing it out. Uh, we are going to go uh, raid Shaper of Stories. I decided I'm going to make this an end of the show because we are a Twitch show. Uh, but thank you everyone for sticking around and we will see you guys in the future. Oh my gosh. All right. So we're going to go ahead and head over to Brett's stream in three, two, one, and read now. Excellent.